a big month for Jurgen Klopp's men in this enthralling climax to this current season. The next three weeks packed full of fixtures. Tonight, though, it is time to put the title race on ice for just a moment because Europe is calling this evening and Liverpool have got their sights set on a semi-final spot. Atalanta stands in their way though in the quarters first. The Italians experiencing Anfield for the very first time with fans this evening. It is an 8 o'clock kickoff here and we've got live audio commentary for you right here on LFC TV and LFC TV Go as well. Yeah, welcome along to Match Day Live. The Liverpool team news is coming up very shortly. But first, it is a warm welcome to Neil Mellor and David Thompson. Nothing beats a European night at Anfield, Miles. This is what it's all about. Obviously, we've been spoiled over the last few years in terms of Champions League games. It's not Champions League. We know it's the Europa League this year. I think the big incentive, the big thing about this year in the Europa League is, is where it ends in Ireland. We have so many Liverpool fans over there and it could be the perfect ending for Jurgen Klopp to win a trophy that he hasn't won. He's won everything else in Ireland. That would be a great send-off. Quarter-finals tonight, first leg at Anfield. Ideally, the second leg would be at Anfield, but the first one at home. So to try and get an advantage would be important, I think. Yeah, what would you say there about hopefully it ending in Dublin, Jurgen Klopp lifting this trophy with this Liverpool team? I mean, football is nothing without fairy tales and, and romance, if you like, and that, that would be the perfect way to, to conclude his tenure. Because uh, I've heard Dublin's quite a good night out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice place to end the, the, the farewell tour, really, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, it'll be a special occasion, but we've got to concentrate on tonight. We've got a quarter-final against Atalanta. This this is a tough game. I know the bookmakers have got us massive favourites, calling us a Champions League team in Europe, but this is this is going to be a tough game tonight. Yeah, we've just seen the Atalanta fans go past it a few minutes ago, and they're, they're looking pretty up for it, pretty excited, of course, to, to be here at Anfield as well. I think that's what I've enjoyed about the Europa League this year, the fact that we've seen sort of different fans yeah. coming to Anfield and teams probably might not play for a number of years, the likes of Lask, USG, but the fans have been brilliant. They've come to Anfield and made it really entertaining. The teams have been sort of nowhere near it, which, which was good for us because we were so good. But the fans were great. And again tonight, Atalanta, it's a quarter-final. They will be the best side we, we do come up against in the Europa League so far. So it'll be a proper test, but the fans will be up for it. Of course they will. And no doubt this is the, the biggest challenge we've faced so far, David. Yeah, I mean, they're not doing too well in the league over in uh, Serie A. But you know they, they are a top team. They're a well-coached team. They'll be difficult to, to break down. Um, they'll be playing with a, a three-five-two, um, and they'll, they'll, they'll be extremely well drilled. And they'll be re honestly, I said that before. Um, people think this could be an easy game for Liverpool. It's not. It's going to be a really difficult game. Yeah, it's a it's a different situation than what Atalanta faced last time. There's fans in the stadium this time. It's going to be raucous. You know, the fans are going to be up for it. So. It'd be interesting to see how they handle it tonight, but it is going to be a difficult game. It certainly is. Let's see the side that Jurgen Klopp has picked to face Atalanta here at Anfield tonight. Peter McDowell has got the Liverpool team news. Pete. Yeah, thank you, Becky. Uh, as pointed out by Virgil van Dijk in his programme notes tonight, the most important response is always the next one in football. And uh, you sense that collective responsibility that they want to put right what went wrong at Old Trafford at the weekend and all things going in their favour, certainly where that medical queue is concerned. It's getting shorter. And of those three players who've been out since February, uh, not including Alisson, uh, both inside that Liverpool squad tonight. So returns for Jota, a return also for Trent Alexander-Arnold on Liverpool's substitutes bench tonight. It's a team that shows six changes. The first of what they're hoping are 12 games to go in this Liverpool season. So let me give you the team in full then. It's uh, Kelleher who continues in goal. So it will be Adrian who continues to deputise for him at least for one more week. Gomez back, uh, Gomez back in the side again. Endo, this is his ninth start in Europa League football. Uh, the only player to start all Europa League games for Liverpool this season. He's got that rhythm. He's almost an immovable force inside that Liverpool team now. Virgil van Dijk, of course, captains the Liverpool team. Uh, Canate returns after missing the draw at Old Trafford from the start. And then Nunes continues as well. He started the last seven. He's got five Europa League goals. McAllister, another immovable object. The uh, 150th game he plays now 
in English football list for Liverpool uh, for tonight. And also a return for Curtis Jones, who'd come off the bench twice in the last week. He's back in the 11 again. Gakpo, Elliott and Simakas make up that Liverpool 11 then. So amongst the substitutes, plenty in reserve, including Mo Salah, 23 goals, his 75th game in Europe. There's only nine players have done that in Liverpool colours before him uh, to get to that tally. And what a big return to the squad for Diogo Jota as well. 14 goals, he's missed 11 games, Jota. Big chances created, and XG still the best in the Premier League for Liverpool. He could make that big difference going forward. And, of course, the player that scored a hat-trick at uh, Atalanta, you might remember in that 5-0 game back in the days of behind-closed-doors football and Trent Alexander-Arnold, of course, on that Liverpool bench as well. Jurgen Klopp in his ninth season, hoping to reach his fifth European final. A very strong team he goes out with tonight. He does indeed. Six changes in total for Manchester United at the weekend. Rotation we expected, Mels. Is that the, the lineup you expected tonight? I was talking to Tom and we weren't sure. It was a hard team to predict. We thought there'd be changes. We didn't know how many. There's three in, in the back four, one in midfield, two in the attack. So we certainly rotated the squad and we knew we had to because it's a big month, April. There's eight games in April. This is the third game. Obviously, there was a lot put into the game at the weekend against Manchester United. We thought the likes of maybe Canate and Gomez would come in. Simicas hasn't played football for a while, so you know it's maybe an ideal game for, to, to, for him to come into. But you have to you have to give credit to the lads who've been coming off the bench and doing really well. The likes of Elliot, the likes of Cody Gakpo, and they've earned the right to get that opportunity. And what a chance tonight for them to do well. I think I've stopped, stopped trying to predict the gaffer's teams <laughs> because it's, it's a nightmare. I always Especially get it wrong, nice but like what I have done is learn to trust him. So, you know, he's picked a strong side tonight. So I like, like to see Gomez there at right back. You know, he's going to bring in the experience and Canate just inside. And it's lovely to see Endo back in, in midfield there because I think he's going to have a big part to play in this game today. It is lovely as well to see some names on the bench that we have not seen in the Liverpool squad for a while, Miles. Most notably, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Diogo Jota as well as Stefan Bajetic too. Absolutely. You know, we're talking about maybe having a final in Ireland. It's a long way to go for that. Competing for the Premier League title. If we are to have an incredible end to this season... We're going to need everybody to play the part. Uh, and it's not just a case of your strongest 11 always out there. You are going to need a squad to all come in and play the part. And to have Jota back out, th out there at some point in April, we think, and obviously Trent as well, that is massive. That, that doesn't just give them a boost. It gives everyone in the squad a boost. It gives the fans a boost. And also the opposition thinking, God, they've got some key players back there. So that's great news to see them back on the bench. It's not just players, is it? Like Mel says there, it's key players. And that's really important for the run-in to be welcoming back such big names over these next few weeks. Yeah, and, and, and we've missed them. We've missed Trent. We've missed Jota. You know, if you look at the chances that we created at the weekend, you know, we can... We, we, there's no doubt that Diogo would have put one of them away. So he, he has been a huge miss. Um, lovely to see them back. Hopefully they can get some minutes. And uh, great to see Barcietis back as well, you know, because he's been out a long time. It's, it's good for his mental health, just that he's even involved. Yeah, yeah. Just talking about chances, strikers, Cody Gappo will be wanting to, to seize another opportunity tonight. He's been looking more like himself recently, obviously got that goal recently as well, which is great for the confidence. Yeah. I mean, he's a player, he hasn't started since the last Europa League game, that was in the round of, of 16, um, against Sparta Prague. I thought he looked sharp, you know, yourself, when maybe you're not in the side, it can be difficult to get that sort of rhythm. Maybe he's that sort of player who, who just maintains that sharpness through his training, because when I've seen him come off the bench, He's look sharp, and I mean the way they started the game in that last game against Sparta Prague, and he was a real big part of that in in the in the attacking areas. What do we put four or five past the early doors? Yeah, he's a bit hit and miss from the bench. Sometimes you put him on, and he's sharp. Sometimes he looks disinterested, and he gets a lot of criticism. But I think he goes under the radar. What he does do is so brilliant, and he makes it look so easy that it just it's it's missed. You know, he he's, he he glues things together. He's very calm. And I think we, we, we could have done with playing him on uh, starting him the, the weekend, actually. So it's nice to see him back in the side today. He can play different roles as well in that. that so, so he likes to come deep. He can be the false nine. He can be out on that left-hand so side as well. And he can sort of flip maybe with Darwin Nunes if we need to change things out there in the front three. But I think he's a very clever player. I think he's yeah. a clever player who can sort of see things and get on the ball in some really dangerous areas, sort of in between the lines, those sort of areas which defenders... It'd be needed tonight to slow the game down and give it a bit of composure because these, these play heavy metal football. We play heavy metal football. They create chances. We create chances. I think we're in for a ding-dong battle here. 
Yeah, maybe one thing I think we are guaranteed tonight is goals because they are fairly free scoring at Atalanta. I think they're the, the fourth high scoring team in Serie A, but at the same time, they do ship it a fair lot of goals at the other end, Mills. Yeah. Yeah. I always believe, and certainly here at Anfield, that, that we'll create chances, we'll score goals. I know there's a little bit of criticism at the weekend. We didn't score more than probably we should have done at Old Trafford. But when you look at the firepower we have, we have players who can score goals, create goals, and can change it off the bench. And I think that's a big thing as well. We've got obviously Harvey Elliott, Darwin Nunez, and Gakpo in the front three. You've got Salah to come off the bench, Diaz to come off the bench, and maybe Jota. So the firepower is there for Liverpool to really cause Atalanta prob problems. And the big thing is it's the first leg. So it's a bit different being first leg at Anfield. We, we know we need to get an advantage. A draw would be a great result for Atalanta tonight. We need to get an advantage to go there for the second leg, knowing that we've done our bit here at home. Yeah, I, th I think it works well. We, it gives us a chance to be able to feel them out a little bit and go into the second leg, you know, with a bit more confidence and a, a bit more understanding of, of their team because they come in a, they could be a little bit of a surprise package today. It's quite difficult. We spoke about trying to predict the Liverpool team. Atalanta equally seem to just in general rotate their squad a lot, Mel's. And then you look one win away in the last seven in all competitions, but only lost one of their last ten away in Europe. So quite a tricky side to, to predict, I think. Yeah, it was a decent away win as well, wasn't it? Away at Napoli. Napoli yeah. yeah, that sort of caught the eye a little bit. Tom, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. They're probably not going to be playing Champions League football next year. So for them, the best chance for that would be to win this competition. If they get through us, they would then become strong candidates to maybe win it. So that they see this as massive, massive tie. They're a dangerous opposition. They'll be disciplined. What they do have is an identity because the manager's been there for eight years. So it's not a case of having they've changed the manager a few times. They know exactly what's expected. And they'll make it difficult for us tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's serious business. We're in the quarterfinals of a European competition. You don't get to this stage unless you're a pretty useful yeah, team. No, there's no, there's no mugs. And these have got experience, as like Mel says. You know, I think it's the last seven or eight years that they've been in Europe, so they have. They've, they've got plenty of experience. And I actually think this formation, the three-five-one-two formation, it suits European football. It suits international football. I think if you look at the way Mancini won the, uh, the, the European Championships, that was with a three-five-two. If you look at the way um, uh, Simone Inzaghi's doing at Inter, he plays a 3-5-2. So I think it, it, it suits European football. Okay, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? One man who has seen all the famous European nights here at Anfield is, of course, our very own Steve Hunter. He is up on the gantry now talking us through some of his very best. Steve. Thank you so much, Becky. Yeah, absolutely. Really looking forward to this one, as we always are. Would you believe this is Liverpool's 28th European quarter-final? I mean, that is something pretty special to behold, isn't it? It really is. And we've had some truly magical moments here at Anfield over the years, especially under Jurgen Klopp, haven't we? My word, we're going to miss that man once he goes at the end of the season. Some truly unforgettable memories that have been created here in front of the cop. And talking about some of those great memories... I certainly picked out a few of my favourite ones over the years. I'm sure you might, you might agree with me on a couple of these. And I think we might start with uh, the Dortmund one, really. That was one of the first big ones, wasn't it? I mean, that was such a special night that era at Anfield. You know, when Dortmund, Jürgen's old club, came to town. It was very emotional as well. Very apt with this weekend, of course, coming into Monday's 35th anniversary of Hillsborough, because the Dortmund fans were special that night. I remember, you know, that they were absolutely respectful when we had the minute silence. It was absolutely amazing. And once the action got underway, what a topsy-turvy game. Remember that one? James Milner crossed on the right-hand side and Dejan Lovren with an unstoppable header into the back of the net. Magical moment. That one against Manchester United here as well in the Europa League. I mean, if it wasn't for David De Gea that night, Liverpool could easily have scored seven, at least eight, nine or ten that night. It was one of the most one-sided European game I've ever seen. The Manchester City one, you know, when Liverpool were 3-0 up after 31 minutes in that game was unbelievable. Remember Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain rifling one in. That one against AS Roma as well, the Champions League semi. Remember a certain Alisson and Becker was in goal for Roma that night. He had no answer to our front three, were, were on fire. And of course, we've got to finish on this one, haven't we? Barcelona, who will ever forget that night? The comeback of all comebacks. Divock Origi riding himself into Anfield folklore. Hopefully another special night beckons for Liverpool again here in Europe. Under the great man Jurgen Klopp. We love these European nights. It's back to you, Becky.
Oh, I'll tell you what, he's the man who has seen it all, hasn't he, Steve Funter? That is almost it for part one of today's Match Day Live, meaning it is time to say goodbye to those of you watching right now on our socials. But to stay with us, you can find details of how to subscribe to LFC TV and LFC TV Go online right now at liverpoolfc.com forward slash watch. Well, you just seen him there. Steve Hunter is alongside Natasha Dowie tonight. They will be with you on LFC TV and LFC TV Go, bringing you live audio commentary of every single kick from 8 o'clock. That's before the match date reaction show with myself and the lads at 10 o'clock. Then at midnight, the full 90 minutes will be available to watch on LFC TV and LFC TV Go subscribers. Also tonight, look out for the latest episode of our new reaction podcast, dropping where you usually get your podcasts. And do give us a subscribe as well while you're at it. So much more to come on LFC TV and LFC TV Go after the break. We are going to hear from Jurgen Klopp when we come back in a couple of minutes' time.